Hello, my name is Elias. My name is Angel Baez. Today we'll be talking about uh, analysis and synthesis of mechanisms. The first part of our project is uh, kinematic analysis of the four slider crank, and then we uh, synthesize a four bar mechanism. Mechanisms are traced back thousands of years ago where men created some types of mechanisms to trap animals. But mechanisms kept evolving, evolving with time. Uh, until the Industrial Revolution of 1820, where mechanisms expanded dramatically. For the first part of the project, we started with an an kinematic analysis for a slider crank. We began with uh, position analysis for different links, uh, the slider, the crank, the coupler. We took the first derivative of the position, we determined the velocity, and we took the the derivative one more time, we determine the acceleration. <clears throat> For the position analysis, we use the Lip equation. We get uh, the scalar equation. After developing that, the scalar equations, we determine the both closures. For R1, for our which is the slider, and uh, the, the coupler link, which is uh, theta 3, uh, knowing that theta 2 was given to be 45 degrees. This graph shows both closures R11 and R12 uh, versus display of displacement uh, versus the the angle theta two of the of the crank. Then we determine the point S position, which is located in the top of the coupler link. Uh, we use these two equations. We put theta five to be ten degrees. Uh, and we determine uh, the coordinates of the point S. This is a trace path for point S calculated. Then we moved on to velocity analysis. Uh, the linear velocity of the slider uh, was given to be uh, 16 inches per second. So uh, we, we took the first derivative of um, the, the position and we determined the angular velocity of the crank and the coupler link. Then we took the derivative one more time, knowing that uh, the linear acceleration of the slider is zero, we determined the angular acceleration of the coupler link and the slider, and the, and the crank. These two graphs show um, the angular acceleration uh, velocity of the crank and uh, the coupler link versus the slider displacement. For the application of our mechanism, because we were given uh, the slider as, as the input, so the engine is the best application for that. This is an animation for our mechanism. We put two mechanisms para parallel to avoid any lack up. This is the same uh, mechanism, we just we want to show the trace path of point S. And this is the same mechanism but with four cylinders. Four pistons, four cranks, four sliders. <coughs> In this part of the project, we're going to be synthesizing the four bar mechanism. So to begin, we're being given three points where the endpoints of a coupler link need to pass through. Uh, plugging those values into this equation will yield us uh, pole positions. Next is to find the, the link lengths. Utilizing the distance formula, we can plug in this. Uh, we can plug in different points to solve for the link lengths. Next, we have to determine what type of four bar mechanism it is. So we use Grashoff's rule, which states that the length of the longest link plus the shortest link needs to be less than the two intermediate lengths. In this case, it, the inequality satisfies, meaning we do have a type one mechanism. <clears throat> Depending on the positioning of the shortest link, uh, we can have a different operation. If the shortest link is located 
uh, in a crank position, you'll end up with a crank rocker. If the shortest link is located between the pole positions, being the fixed link, then you'll have a double crank. And if the shortest link is located in the coupler position, then you're going to end up with a double rocker. In this case, we have a crank rocker. Now we start off with the loop equations, R1 plus R4 is equal to R2 plus R3. Uh, from that, we can derive our scalar equations. Um, you can square each equation and rewrite in terms of theta 4. And then by utilizing the Pythagorean identity, we can add the equations together to eliminate theta 4. Uh, then we reorganize the equation to, to, to look like this in this format, where A and B and C have certain values. <clears throat> and then utilizing the tangent half angle formulas and substituting for x, we get these equations that we can plug in into the equation. Now once you're at this point, you can use the quadratic equation to solve for x values. Uh, once you have x values, you can plug them in to that equation up there where you can get the angle for theta 3, for the, the coupler link. And then once you have theta 3, you can plug it into this equation to solve for the rocker angle, theta 4. And theta 1 is fixed, and in order to solve for it, you use this equation uh, utilizing the two points, the two uh, pole position points. This is a, a picture of our four bar mechanism. Um, this being the fixed link right here. That's the crank is the shortest link up there. That's uh, the coupler link, and this is going to be our rocker. Uh, there's spline drives on each end. Uh, for the input, you can attach a pulley, a gear, any kind of drive you want, powered by a motor, completes four rotations. The outcome on this end would be you can attach any kind of arm you want, maybe like a wiper blade for a wiping motion, or maybe some kind of sawing motion. Uh, in, this pic in this animation, you can see the trace path for the crank and for the rocker. Okay, so in conclusion, these mechanisms seem very simple, but they require a lot of computations to, to figure them out. Uh, the constraints that were given to us all uh, resulted in properly working mechanisms, so we didn't have to modify anything. And the uh, four bar mechanisms and slider crank uh, mechanisms are just commonly used everywhere, all around the world. Thank you.